Welcome back to Fred in the Shed and in this video we're going to have a look at the Bofang BFT1 stroke 9100A which is sold as a mini personal walkie talkie. Firstly we'll be looking at the specs for this radio which is a little bit confusing, I'll explain that. Then we'll have a physically look at the radio itself and then finally I will do some range testing in the PMR frequency band. But to start, I think the most attractive thing about this radio is its diminutive size. It is absolutely tiny. It almost looks like a child's toy. Almost like you can't believe that this is supposed to be a fully functioning UHF radio. Another really tempting thing about this radio is it's incredibly cheap price. You can pick this up for as little as 10 UK pounds from eBay China as a standalone radio. But just think about that for a moment. Just beware if you want to buy this radio on its own. So why the word of warning? Well, if you look at the radio, you'll notice there is no keypad. So this radio has to be programmed via a PC. Now you may already own a Bofang radio and you have a programming cable and you might think, oh, I can just plug this in to the little mini and away I go. But actually, no, this radio has its own unique mini USB programming cable. Now that's not all bad news because the cable is available separately on eBay and uh, yeah it's uh, pretty cheap but why buy twice when you can buy it all in one go? So just take special care and look at the seller's description to make sure you're getting everything you need because it appears the Bofang does ship a stand with a mini USB cable but in actual fact that is only for charging the radio that will not allow you to program it via PC. It's the special prolific USB cable is the one you want that normally has a thicker end so just be aware of that. Okay moving on to the specs for the radio things are a little bit confusing here but we'll go through the basics now you may want to pause these screens so you can read it in greater detail. The radio has 20 channel memories it has two outputs 0.5 of a watt or one watt and you've got things like an FM radio and a flashlight which is sometimes handy. Just note that the antenna is fixed to the case. Unfortunately, it's not a removable and replaceable item. So that's all well and good. It's when we get to the operating frequencies that things get a little bit confusing because the information on the in internet is contradictory. Uh, some claim this radio will tune on a 70 centimeter band from 400 to 470. Some, some say 400 to 420. Some say 420 to 470. So I was, incredibly confused so in the end I ended up going to the uh, Bofang main website well and that wasn't much help either I searched 16 pages would you believe 141 Bofang radios and couldn't find anything for the 9100 or the BFT1 at all they do have the operating instructions but there's no specifics or specs for the radio itself so I'm wondering if Bofang actually just sell this under license and it could be made by someone else entirely. So thanks but no thanks there Bofang not much help. So back to the internet I went and then eventually with some more searching I started to find the answer funny enough on the Amazon US website. Now it's worth noting when you read these reviews not everyone is particularly happy with the radio I don't really know what people expect for 10 or 12 pounds but they certainly expect a lot but nevertheless the reviews were quite useful and I got most of the information I wanted here and it turns out the radio is actually UHF and VHF yeah it's a true dual bander and it will tune from 136 to 174 on 2 meters and 400 to 470 on 70 centimeters and it appears all this extra range is available is when you use the free 9100 Bofang software. And you will have to use that software to program the radio because unfortunately this Bofang is not compatible with Chirp. So it's a little confusing. I'm not sure why it is not sold and advertised as a UHF and VHF radio as a dual band, but it seems to be that's the, uh, that's the way it is. Anyway, enough talking about the radio itself, I think it's time we had a closer look at it in the look hand. this uh, little bow thing. Now before I get too involved in this, I would like to say big thanks to Gary. Gary was very kind enough to send me this radio. Now you can see I've got the Bofang UV5R. This is a universally popular radio. I think everyone's pretty much got one of these. And it's good to compare the size comparison. Now in height wise, you can see that they're very, uh, very similar. But when you look at the, uh, the width, the small size the little mini Bofang uh, does become apparent. It is absolutely diminutive compared to the more chunky 
UV 5R. But it's not to say that it, it doesn't feel sort of toy-like. It does it doesn't creak. It does seem to be sort of quite well made. Of course, it's worth noting that unlike the UV 5R, the antenna is fixed. And that's a bit of a shame that we couldn't re, uh, re replace that. Um, so we switch it on. Gives you a little uh, voltage symbol there, which is quite useful to see how the battery goes on. You'll notice it's got a little uh, backlight. Yeah, it's only a sort of an orange... LED, it doesn't cover the whole of the, uh, the dial, unfortunately, so that's probably a little bit of a shame. Um, now, it has, does obviously have menu options. You do have a scan feature where you can scan your program channels. I think you can alter the step rate. It does have an alarm if that wasn't you interested in that. And I think you can uh, TX and receive on different frequencies. I'm not going to go into the menu system on this video. I, I want to try and keep this one a, uh, a little bit sort of uh, shorter. Um, other buttons, well, you've got a built-in FM radio, which might be of use to it, might not. Cough. Just a minute. Now, that's something that I want to get into. It's the volume of this thing. That is the lowest volume. And it's still... It's still quite loud. That's one thing I found with this radio, that the volume is too much, especially for such a small little micro speaker and there was a little thing on the internet about this people have actually gone into the radio and soldered a resistor across the, the audio audio amplifier chip to try and reduce the volume down a little bit so yeah that's your the, the FM, fm radio now the volume itself as you saw to access the volume you, you have to press the volume key and then use the up and down button i personally don't like that maybe it's just me i think they missed a trick there the top here with which has got the torch on it you'd think that would be the volume control a bit like the uv 5r but it's it's fixed and it's a pity that uh, they couldn't have made that the volume control but it does has a flashlight i'll demonstrate that yeah it's not you know it's not brilliant it's not as powerful as uv 5r but uh, yeah it does work and i'm sure that might be useful in certain circumstances so a quick look around the radio if we look to this size well you have here what appears to be a standard bofang sort of programming uh, cable port. You've got the microphone and the headphone socket, but when you lift this little rubber flap up, what you find instead is a multi 3.5 millimeter jack. Now they do provide a headset and microphone with the kit, which is a little bit cheap and cheerful. Unfortunately, I couldn't get mine to work. When I actually plugged mine in, the radio went into transmit mode, um, whether that's it's probably a short on the uh, headset itself. I don't know if you're really going to use that Anyway, moving to the bottom of the radio, we have got this all-important USB jack for your uh, programming cable there, which is something that you're really going to need to get. That, that appears to be unique on this radio. It doesn't appear on any of the other Bofang radios. And I'm not quite sure why they did that. That's a little bit odd. That's, again, I, I do feel that maybe this is manufactured by a third party and then just uh, sold by Bofang separately. And on this side of the radio, you've got quite a nice uh, sort of thick rubber push the talk button and then a uh, SOS button which I'm not going to press because I did that before and that sets off a particularly loud siren which is uh, quite annoying and yeah that's that's really that's really about it um, you know this as I say it's a shame it hasn't really got a keypad I must admit that all the programming has to be done uh, just via the uh, PC right I am going to do uh, some range testing on this now as you know I'm not a licensed amateur so I can't use any of the uh, two meter bands and that's not been programmed into the radio anyway by Gary but uh, Gary has programmed in the eight popular PMR bands so that's what I'm going to test the radio on now I shall go out the house uh, I do probably three distances up to about a mile I'm not expecting very much to be honest I've got to be honest if it works at the end of the road uh, I'll probably be relatively pleased with that i am in a built in built up suburban area now these radios especially ones with a fixed antenna these will work best if you can get them miles out in the open and uh, get them on high ground when you get to an enclosed suburban area with lots of houses lots of traffic uh, even the uv5 r there with, with you know with a fairly decent long antenna that will sort of uh, suffer as well so that'll be the next part we'll go out and uh, we'll give it a test and we'll actually see if it works on the PMR bands. I think to be honest mostly this is what this radios are going to be used for I don't think amateurs are going to be drawn towards it with a fixed antenna I think this is really going to be used just as an alternative little pocket PMR radio okay next bit so will be this is what we're going to do 
for the audio test. Nothing, nothing fancy. Fred in the shed, by the way. A knobby no mates test because I've got no one to talk to on PMR around here. It's pretty much uh, dead these days. So what I'm going to do, you see I've set the radio up here. I've put it upstairs in the bedroom to give it the best possible chance. And I'm going to take the little mini bowfang out and I'll do three tests. I'll do one at the end of the road. Oh, well, that's probably only about 200 metres apart from this radio. Uh, I'll walk on a bit further. I'll probably do one at about 400 metres. And then the final test is, I don't know, it's probably about three, three quarters of a mile. Um, what's that? 600, 650 metres, something like that. And we'll see if the, uh, the radio can get back to the little UV5R. OK, time for the first audio test. Uh, about 200 metres thereabouts from the house. So I expect this one to work, even with the small antenna. So here we go. Yeah, audio test, audio test at about 200 metres, 200 metres from the house on a little mini Bofang 1. Audio, audio, audio. Right, hopefully the, uh, that one will work. Next one, next, next test, about 450 metres. Yeah, audio test, audio test at about 200 metres, 200 metres from the house on a little mini Bofang 1. Audio, audio, audio. Right, so point two at a test. Now I did look on the uh, on Google Earth. This is at about 462 meters, approximately. So we can do an audio test at uh, 462 meters. Yeah, audio test two, audio test two, about 460 meters from the house on the little Bofang Mini. Audio one two, audio one two three four five. Audio one two, audio one two three four five. Okay, well, off, off to the next bit. It's a bit more of a walk. It's uh, tested it in the car yesterday. It's uh, three quarters of a mile from the QTH. So uh, better get me walking shoes. Okay, on this is point three of the audio test. Um, I did clock this in the car yesterday by chance, and it's uh, three quarters of a mile from the QTH. I've come up on a flyover bridge to give it the best possible chance. I'm not hoping that. I don't think it's going to. I don't think it's really going to work. Not with this little tiny uh, antenna. But anyway, it's a bit noisy. But here goes. Yeah, audio check, audio check, three uh, three quarters of a mile from QTH, up on the motorway bridge, on a little Bofang, so audio, one, two, one, two, one, two, audio, audio check. And someone comes, and someone comes back. <laughs> well, at least we know it receives anyway. Right, I'm back home again. I did the range tests on the little Bofang. I've not w watched that on a computer yet. Um, ju just finally going to do a receive test with the using the UV5i. Oh, back to this, and we'll just see what the audio is uh, is like. So I'm just going to go out and stand in the garden and uh, give it a test. Okay, this uh, is an audio test of the little mini Bofang using UV5R. Uh, not not very far away, just. Uh, just sounds what that little speaker is going to sound like. Hopefully, my voice is coming across natural and clear. As I say, this little radio is exceptionally loud. I think. I think it's a little bit too loud, and the volume control a little bit tricky. But uh, anyway, we'll see how that comes out. So, audio one two one two. Fred in the shed, and uh, I'm gone. So, right, just back from looking at the test results on the uh, on the computer, and do you know what? I'm changing my opinion. I, I'm, I was sort of working on the basis this was just like a novelty, you know, a ch bit of a child's toy. But no, no, those results have changed my opinion. Even at the three-quarter mile mark on that uh, motorway bridge, it got back to the UV5R. Yeah, OK, the, you know, the audio was slightly broken up. Um, but then bearing in mind the UV5R was indoors. If you had these out in the open, you could just about QSO in a, a built-up suburban area at three quarters of a mile, and that's quite impressive for something that's just got a very, very small inch long antenna. So, and at the 450 mark, I mean, well, you know, it was uh, it was fine, wasn't it? You certainly could sort of uh, use it, and it's so discreet, you know, walking around the streets, when you walk around with the UV5R, especially if you've got the longer 177 antenna, you do feel a little bit conspicuous, you feel like a security guard or something. But this one, you know, look, 
it's, it's pretty much invisible. You can just sort of have it in your pocket. You don't realise that you're carrying it around. And, uh, well, it, it actually it works. Of course, you know, 13 quid. I mean, come on. That's the, that is the cost of a large pizza nowadays. So I have to recommend it at that price. But remember, of course, as I said at the beginning of the video, you're going to need that uh, unique USB prolific cable. It won't work with the other both end cables. It won't work with a standard cable. So you're going to need the uh, the cable. The 9100 software is available free uh, online. So, yeah, there you go. I mean, I think if you haven't got one of these small little dual banders, and you're thinking of getting one for PMR, I still think the UV5R is, you know, it is a better buy, round right about sort of £21. Um, yeah, it knocks the socks off of that one as far as range goes. But of course it is quite a chunky, conspicuous uh, radio. But if you're looking just for a little radio to add to your collection, <laughs> you, can, you can't really go wrong. It's a shame about the volume control, and I've banged on about it before. Um, I think it would have been better if they'd done the volume on the little torch uh, bit there, like as in the UV5R. That, it's a bit of a pain having to double press and go through the volume, but that, that's maybe I'm just sort of, you know, sort of picking at uh, straws there. So there you go, gonna bring it up to the end of the video. For the money that they're asking for, it has to be a recommendation. I can't do anything else. And incidentally, when I was on that motorway bridge, you remember that someone, I said someone came back to me. Well, it turns out that by accident doing tests, I actually picked up on a little bit of a kind of an emergency situation that was going on in the local area. That might be interesting to put out on a video. So what I'll do is I'll put that onto a Fred in the Shed 2 video and I'll link it at the end of this video. And if you want to know what was going on there, then uh, pop over and give that one a watch. But as for now, well, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up. It does help me and it does help the channel as well. But for now, thank you very much for watching. Subscribe for more. There's going to be more radio videos coming up and other videos as well. Stay safe. Cheers. And I'll catch you all on the next one.